Congratulations to Speaker of the House Mike Johnson for having the courage and fortitude to release all of the J6 tapes, which will reveal completely what really happened on January 6th. Thank you very much, Mike. Great job. From Kentucky is recognized for five minutes. I thank the Chairman. Uh, Director Ray, in light of information provided to us about the FBI's investigation of the January 6th pipe bombs, in an interview with Assistant Director Stephen Duantuano, Chairman Jordan and I sent you a letter a month ago. Some of the information that we found in that interview was that phone data that could have helped to identify the pipe bomber was corrupted, was unusable. Uh, he also wasn't sure who found or how the second bomb was found at the DNC. Do you know how the second bomb was found at the DNC? And, and when do you plan on answering our letter? Well, as to the letter, I, I will uh, work with the department to make sure we can figure out what information we can provide. As you know, this is a very active, ongoing investigation, and there are some restrictions on that, but we yes, will Yes, we can handle classified respond. information, it's, and we fund your department, and so you need to provide that. that. I, it's not, respectfully, it's not an issue of classification. It's an issue of commenting on ongoing criminal investigations, which is something that by longstanding department policy we are restricted in doing. And in fact, the last administration actually strengthened those policies partly That's because- That's not our policy though, and we fund you. So let's move on. I could do you know how the second pipe bomb, do you, can you tell us how the second pipe bomb was found at the DNC? I, again, I'm not gonna get into that here. 900 I, days ago is when this happened. And you said you had total confidence we'd apprehend the subject. We've found video that looks like somebody, a passerby, miraculously found this pipe bomb at the DNC and then notified the police. Miraculously, I say, because it was at specifically the same, the precise time to cause the maximum distraction from the events going on at the Capitol. Can you show this video that we have, please? I'd like to know if the director has seen this. This is somebody with a, with a mask on, wearing a hat. They're walking in front of the DNC, which is out of the view on the right-hand side. You'll see him come into view. He goes to one police car. He goes to another police car. He's holding a backpack. He's got a mask on. He's talking to the police. And within a minute, they start scrambling. You'll see the camera turn to the pipe bomb, the location of the pipe bomb. By the way, that's, a, I believe, the Metro police are now getting out of their car, and that's, uh, Vice President-elect detail in the black SUV, I believe, parked about 30 feet from the pipe bomb, eating lunch. Okay, now we go over to the location of the pipe bomb. The cameras are scrambling. It, it appears to me that that's not a coincidence, that the person with the backpack who walked by that bench and then went up to the police uh, and the detail didn't, it, didn't do that accidentally. They had a purpose in mind, and that what transpired after that was the result of information that person gave to them. If that person found the pipe bomb, would they be a suspect? Well, again, I don't want to speculate about specific individuals. I will tell you that we have done thousands of interviews, uh, reviewed something like 40,000 video files, of which this is uh, one, uh, assessed 500-something tips, have you interviewed that the person? Devices. We, we have conducted all logical investigative steps and interviewed all logical individuals at this well, then point. Then you need, it's 900 days. You need to tell us what you found because we're finding stuff you haven't released into the public. And well, Director Ray, last year, you might recall, sir, our exchange regarding the FBI's involvement on January 6th and prior. I'm happy to jog your memory to quote, According to the record, I ask you, did you have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol on January 6th prior to the doors being opened? You responded, I quote, again, I have to be very careful of what I say. To which I said, it should be a no. Can you not tell the American people no? We did not have confidential human sources dressed as Trump supporters positioned inside the Capitol on January 6th. A year has passed. We sit here again a year later. We, the people, still do not have a definitive answer from you or anyone else in the Biden administration 
regarding the FBI presence and participation in the months leading up to the November election and in the weeks and days prior to January 6th and on January 6th here in D.C. We can't get a straight answer, although we have a tremendous amount of evidence harvested and reviewed over the course of the last year, which you will see in September, Stephen D'Artano, formerly in charge of the FBI's field office in Washington, D.C., testified to the House Judiciary Committee that he was aware the FBI informants would attend the Stop the Steal rally thrown on January 6th. You confirmed that the FBI had confidential human sources at the Stop the Steal rally on January 6th here in D.C., sir? Congressman, as we've discussed before, I'm not going to get into where we have or have not used confidential human sources. But what okay, I can we'll tell move you, on. you asked for a definitive answer. We'll move answer. on. It's my time. You said no. You're not going to answer. That's cool. We're watching. Mr. Chairman, may you're, I answer you're, the question? Your moment, your moment will come. This is my time. Earlier this year, an FBI informant who is reported to have, quote, his quote, under oath, marched to the U.S. Capitol with fellow Proud Boys members on January the 6th, close quote. He said he was communicating with his FBI handler while people were entering the U.S. Capitol. Can you confirm that the FBI had that sort of engagement with your own agents embedded within the crowd on January 6th? If you are asking whether the violence at the Capitol on January 6th was part of some operation orchestrated by FBI sources and or agents, the answer is emphatically You're saying not. no? No. You're saying no? Not okay. violence orchestrated Let's by FBI on. sources or agents. Are you familiar with, with, you know what a ghost vehicle is? Director, you're director of the FBI, I certainly should. You know what a ghost bus is? A ghost bus? Ghost bus. I'm not sure I've used that term before. Okay. Well, it's pretty common in, in law enforcement. It's a vehicle that's, that's used for secret purposes. It's painted over. These two buses in the middle here, they were the first to arrive at Union Station on January 6th, 0500. I have all this evidence. I'm showing you a tip of this iceberg. Mr. Chairman. These two buses Mr. are Chairman. painted completely white. Point of order. Point of order, sure. Just run over the time. I understand, but you'll recall that Ms. Jackson Lee's been allowed to go two minutes before. I've been very fair in letting people finish their questioning throughout my tenure as chairman, and I'll continue to be fair on that regard. But I will make a note to the members, if you could stay as close within your time as possible, we have a lot of people that want to ask these gentlemen questions. So with that, the gentleman yields. But uh, your, your point, I've been very fair in this, Mr. Ivey, uh, with I, everybody I, on this side of the aisle just as much. I don't think I that. accuse you of being unfair, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, you're, you're, you're making a point. Order. Okay, thank you. Uh, I now recognize, now recognize Mr. May Gray. I close this, this statement, uh, Mr. Mr. No, Mr. Chairman? No, I, I, think, I think your time is expired, Mr. Chairman. I note that, that other members across the aisle have been, been granted time, and I object well, to, my, to my question being, well, being closed. This is a very significant hearing, Mr. Chairman, and these buses are nefarious in nature and were filled with FBI informants dressed as Trump supporters you, and deployed you, onto our Capitol on January 6th. You made, your you day made is your, coming, you Mr. Wright. Mr. Uh, Higgins. I Is the Democratic narrative surrounding January 6th crumbling? Because after the release of never-before-seen video footage from that fateful day, right-wing political comment commentator Dinesh D'Souza seems to think so. Here is um, Scott Adams commenting on what he's seeing. The entire architecture of deceit is crumbling. Feel it. What he's saying is that a narrative, in order to succeed, has got to have a limited amount of facts and when facts start coming out one after the other, facts that are indisputable, that you can see with your own eyes, that contradict the narrative, the narrative begins to be, become shaky. And uh, this is, by the way, I'm going to call it to some degree the 2,000 mules effect, because that's the effect that 2,000 mules had on the, quote, safest and most secure election in the history narrative. And now we come to the January 6th narrative, and my question is, is it really crumbling? 
Let's look at some of the scenes that we are seeing that are out there now on social media. Uh, one of them shows a guy uh, who is who is evidently in handcuffs or restraints, and he comes up to the cops, and they take the restraints off, and then they kind of fist bump him, and they let him go. So the first question is, who is that guy? Is he, first of all, is he a normal Trump guy? Let's just say that he's a Trumpster. He comes in. Evidently, someone's put handcuffs on him. He goes up to the cops and they're like, well, there are all these other guys around here. They're not handcuffed. So why should you be? And so it's like, listen, we're, we're not a bad guy. I will take off your handcuffs and you, you seem peaceful enough. You don't seem you need to be restrained. And this guy then joins the crowd. So if that's the case, what kind of insurrection are we dealing with? Hmm. Well, in case you missed it, last week, House Republicans, led by Speaker Mike Johnson, made over 40,000 hours of previously secret January 6 footage available online for public access. According to former President Donald Trump, that video is exonerating. He reposted a warning to those who blame him for the January 6 riot. It read, quote, everything you've been told about January 6 is BS. The real insurrectionists are those who framed Trump to try to stop him from ever being president again and who framed you as domestic terrorists to try to crush America first. They have failed, and they will pay. Hmm. So we talked about the new footage um, the other day. Look, I, I, I'm not one who's trying to totally recast the events of January 6th. I think a lot of um, bad behavior did go on, which was rightly prosecuted, including trespassing and breaking of windows and defacing of public property, and people who have fought with the police. I have no tolerance for that. Um, I do think, now we've seen, though, a lot of footage, of, so this new footage shows people calmly walking through the halls, the police are, are letting them do so. I, this might be after, um, after the, the protesters had already smashed through and then other people came through. It is a, it's, and I, I wish we could just, like, watch all the footage and have it made all publicly available. So now you can, you have to go to the Capitol to view it on, like, a private telescreen or something. I don't know why we're doing it that way. Um, but they did, you know, they charged some people, some people who weren't even there, the Proud Boys leadership, with, uh, with organizing a terrorist attack on par with, like, 9-11. They got, like, 20 years. And so when you see footage of a lot of protesters, not all of them, not saying it's all of them, calmly walking through the halls, escorted by the police or around the police in a way that is not, they're not getting any pushback, they're not being told not to do that. I think it does very much complicate their narrative that we, we watched a highly organized extremist attack on our capital with a with an a, a actual goal of halting the election and that it was you know, part of this extremist movement, that it had leadership and it was organized and, and there's not, no more to question or see there, that just, I think, has collapsed. Uh, I don't think it's collapsed. And I would argue that, um, of course, everyone who was there on January 6th wasn't the people who were climbing on things, taking down um, flags and piercing at officers and clowning. There were people there who were just holding signs who were just there. Uh, I don't like think that that narrative, of the people I don't think that that narrative yeah. was one that was ever really lost. Uh, they focused on those who were abusive because those who were abusive and clowned were, quite frankly, criminals who were trying to effectively overturn an election. Um, but exoneration here is a very interesting term. We know that Trump used that himself multiple times. It was technically incorrect. Um, and this is not this is not a case where that video footage could be considered an exoneration. Again, there were thousands of people who were out on January 6th who were in front of the Capitol. Um, all of those thousands of people weren't ambushing and, you know, committing acts of violence. The ones who were, however, the Tiny ones who were. were, you know, uh, storming people's offices, the ones who were, you know, uh, bashing police officers' heads in, those people were the subject of the investigations. Now, the Proud Boys is a different conversation because the Proud Boys did organize they had several organizing tactics that they did via social media, which were publicly available. We could all see them. Um, in addition to that, there were entities that funded getting several individuals here. Again, not saying that all of the individuals who were right. funded by conservative the organizations they organized the were there for violent activity. But that does not exonerate any of these people. I think that there is a concerted effort amongst the right to try to recast January 6th as, uh, as basically a tourist attraction to a certain extent, and that that's problematic. Um, but the American people recognize 
one, that that election was not stolen. Two, that um, former President Trump ran around the country saying things that were untrue, and so did many of his acolytes. Also, that January 6th was a very destructive time for the American public. Now, are people looking towards today further prosecutions and further conversation and media coverage of January 6th? I would argue no. I think the majority of America, regardless of what side of the aisle they happen to be on, voter electorate-wise, have since moved on. They don't want to see America go down that path again, because the fear is that if people aren't held accountable for January 6th, that we will be very close to having that type of situation happen over again. And that's a very scary place to be. And I think that we should acknowledge that and that this very small snippet of the day does not eradicate the fact that there were several people whose lives were legitimately at risk. There was uh, so no disagreement on on the election. The election was not stolen. Uh, Dinesh D'Souza, whose clip we played, had you know has put out a, that documentary that he referenced, um, asserting otherwise. I think it's totally inaccurate, incorrect. Um, Donald Trump was foolish to say the things that he said about the election, both because they were wrong and they served to um, make it less likely that he would ever be it would just elected again. It doesn't make, even make sense from his perspective because. It's, very clear that moderate voters and swing voters and independent voters in the states he need to win don't like when he keeps talking about it, and even though he can't shut up about it. So I don't have any disagreement with you on any of that, and I'm glad you recognize that a lot of the activity that went on there was, in fact, First Amendment protected activity. You don't have to agree with what people are protesting about to recognize their right to do so. Um, I do think the mainstream media and many in the Democratic Party have tried to so we're, we're trying to recast January 6th a little bit because it has been held up as, as equivalent to a, a terrorist attack. I think it was an embarrassing day. I think it was an embarrassing spectacle. Um, I, I was there covering it. What I witnessed was, uh, was not good. Um, smashing the windows of the Capitol, trespassing, fighting with police. These are all things, you know, conservatives always said that only the left would do, um, only like Black Lives Matter protesters and Antifa or something. And then, well, then they did it, and they really exceeded a lot of the moral high ground there, and I think that was a, a big mistake. But I, I can't co-sign the idea that um, the people going to jail for 10 and 20 years or more uh, fits the gravity of what occurred there. I don't think it was organized. I think it was uh, the protest was organized. I think the, the idea to storm the Capitol was a spontaneous riot action taken because the crowd was hyped up um, based on what Trump had said. I don't think they had any actual plan to halt the. I mean, they 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 had a plan to halt it. They they. I mean, not a plan. They, they succeeded in halting the vote counting, but then the vote counting was just going to happen at another time. They didn't, on January 6th, they were no, they, it was a Just because they were ignorant crowd, in their ploy doesn't mean that it. there wasn't one. Well, um, just because their tactics were not successful doesn't mean that they did not go there with an ideology to create chaos and mayhem to thwart. I think it knocks down the idea that this was a, an organized and seditious plot. It wasn't organized well. The <laughs> a oh. disorganized uh, plot does not mean that it wasn't organized. It means that their, or their organizing processes were, they failed. They weren't as smart and strategic as they assumedly thought that they were. But this isn't the first time in American history where we've seen uh, vigilantism go awry. Yeah. But a lot of time we see that. And also, the, you know, there's the question about, well, who was goading them to go into the building? Um, the, the Capitol Hill... Uh, chief of police was, you know, set to talk about how there were, in fact, some, um, this is like not a conspiracy theory, that there were police operatives uh, among the crowd, which is common for um, extremist groups. Often there are police embedded within yeah. them. Um, militia groups, uh, white supremacist groups are often, their, their activities are often closely monitored by law enforcement. In fact, half the people in the group are often usually law enforcement or law enforcement informants. You don't have to sell me on law enforcement no, you being know. shady. But <laughs> right, you know that. So... I mean, I have questions about the extent to which that was happening, too, because, the, you know, the, there's one guy uh, the day before who says, and we're going to have to go into the Capitol, and everyone goes, nope, Fed, you're a Fed. If you're telling us to do crimes, you're a Fed, because these very right-wing people know, some of them, a lot, some of them are idiots, but some of them know from their previous experience with militia groups that the person inducing you to commit a crime is very often <laughs> a member of law enforcement because that's how they, they entrap you. That's how they can then charge you. So I still have a lot of questions about well, that. But we also talk about the mapping out and the targeting of specific offices uh, at the Capitol. If you're someone who does not work there often or somebody who
who is in visit often. Um, I've lobbied there. I, it's still frustrating to get around to some people's offices. Mm -hmm. The direction in which individuals who had never been to D.C. before largely or definitely had not, you know, navigated Capitol Hill to be able to know, hey, this is the door you go into. These are the spaces you walk. There are a lot of conversations around what level of intelligence they had before they got here because they weren't just wandering around the Capitol. Like that is that's a narrative that is false. Well, right. I mean, they will say or some on the right have alleged in some places they were being they were almost being like escorted by the police or by or by people who were in the building, which made some of them think that they were welcome to be there. Now, again, that's not a plausible defense for the people who broke open the windows and barged in. And again, I, I am fully I'm good to charge people commensurate with what they actually did on that day. I'm skeptical of the broader organized terrorist extremism charge that did did end in some really long sentences for a couple of people. Uh, especially for uh, Tario, who used to be right. a government informant. Right. In, indeed. In fa yes. In fact, that is the case. So, uh, well, we will continue to uh, see how the coverage of the new footage shapes out, and we'll have more rising right after this. The House managers spoke about rhetoric about a constant drumbeat of heated language. Well, as I'm sure everyone ex watching expected, we need to show you some of their own words. I, I, I just don't even know why there aren't uprisings all over the country, and maybe there will be. There needs to be unrest in the streets for as long as there is unrest in our lives. You've got to be ready to throw a punch. Well, you have to be ready to throw a punch. Donald Trump, I think you need to go back and, and punch him in the face. That I thought he should have punched him in the face. I feel like punching him. I think I'd like to take him behind the gym if I were in high school. If we were in high school, I'd take him behind the gym and beat the hell out of him. No, I wish we were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. I will go and take Trump out tonight. Take them out now. Okay. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? They're still going to have to go out and put a bullet in Donald Trump. Show me where it says that protests are supposed to be polite and peaceful. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. Please. Get up in the face of some Congress people. People will do what they do. I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind, and you will pay the price. We're going to go in there, we're going to the <laughs> well, This is just a warning to you Trumpers. Be careful. Walk lightly. And for those of you who are soldiers, make them pay. If you had to be stuck in an elevator with either President Trump, Mike Pence, or Jeff Sessions, who would it be? Does one of us have to come out alive? <laughs> <laughs> and there's more. I promise to fight every single day. One, I, I'm a fighter and I'm relentless. But I'm a fighter and I'm relentless. A fighter and I'm relentless. I will fight like hell. But the way I see it now is that we pick ourselves up and we fight back. That's what I think it's all about. We stand up and we fight back. We do not back down. We do not compromise. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. You can either lie down you can you can whimper, you can pull up in a ball, you can decide to move to Canada, or you can stand your ground and fight back. And and that's what it's about. We, we do fight back, but we are going to fight back. We are not turning this country over to what Donald Trump has sold. We are just not. Look, people are upset and they're right to be upset. Now we can whimper, we can whine, or we can fight back. Me, I'm here to fight back. I'm here to fight back because we will not forget. <clears throat> we do not want to forget. We will use that vision to make sure that we fight harder, we fight tougher, and we fight more passionately for than ever. We still have a fight on our hands. Fight hard for the changes Americans are demanding. Get in the fight, to winning the fight, to fight fighting, please fighting. We'll use every tool possible to fight for this change. We'll fight, we'll fight, to fight fighting hard. Serious about fighting and fight. We gotta get on our front foot and fight back. From
problems, we call them out and we fight back. I'm in this fight. I am fighting. I am fighting. Get in this fight. Get in this fight. Get in this fight. And fighting, we all need to be in the fight. We all need to stay in the fight. We stay in this fight. We fought back. We fought back. I am not afraid of a fight. I am in this fight all the way. You don't get what you don't fight for. Our fight, our fight. We are in this fight for our lives. This is the fight of our lives. But we are going to make sure that this fight does not end tonight. This is a fight for our lives, the lives of our friends and family members and neighbors. It is a fight, fight, and it is a fight that we're going to work to make sure continues. It's a fight. It is a fight. It is a fight. And that's what this fight is for. Well, I'm wired to fight anyone who isn't doing their job for us. I'm John Tester, and you damn right I approve this message. And I'll have lots of fights ahead of us, and I'm ready to stand up and keep fighting. We have to fight. We're going to fight. We're going to fight. We need to fight, 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 and we need to fight. We're going to fight. We got a few more fights. We're going to take the privilege of a few more fights, and we have the biggest fight of all. I will never stop fighting. I will fight like hell to fight back against anyone. We need to say loud and clear that we are ready to fight. It's a bare knuckles fight. Now they're going to have to actually fight back against people. The fight has to be conducted. It's so important that we need to fight. Fight that fight. We have been fighting. I was fighting very hard. Time is of the essence, both in terms of the fight. I think we should be fighting. Well, I, I really believe we need to fight. And we're simply not going to take this line down. We're going to keep fighting. So I'm telling all my colleagues, this is the fight of our life. Whose side are you on? Who are you fighting for? They're fighting, or I'm fighting. We're both fighting. We will fight back. We're not going to just take this line down. I'm just going to keep the fight up. What we have to do right now is fight as hard as we can. We have to rise up and, and fight back. And so we're going to fight, and we're going to continue to fight. I am going to be fighting, fighting like hell. We keep fighting, 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 or we kept fighting, and we did. So we're going to keep fighting. We have to be fighting every every uh, single day. We have to fight back, and we have no choice but to do that. I think we're doing the right thing to do that. Uh, fighting, and I'm fighting. Well, our job right now is to fight. It's really important. I'm going to keep fighting. I'm asking for the support of people across the country to fight back. And you got to be fierce uh, in uh, fighting. Keep fighting. Brown have been fighting. I've told President Biden I will fight like mad. I'll tell you what. Now, more than ever, we have to fight like hell. We have these battles on the floor of the Senate. I'm going to go down right. and battle, and, uh, and I'm going to be down there on the floor fighting. Right. But we Democrats are fighting as hard as we can. Democrats are fighting as hard as we can. Credit it in any way, but we're fighting back. What we've got to do is fight in Congress, fight in the courts, fight in the streets, fight online, fight at the ballot box. Fighting and pushing uh, around the clock, fighting. Continue to be brave and be strong and keep fighting. We're getting people engaged in the fight. We're fighting. We've got to keep fighting and keep focused. Continue to fight. Fight. Uh, this is going to be a fight. We'll also fight him and challenge him in every way that we can, in the Congress, in the courts, and in the streets. To continue fighting, we each have an important role to play in fighting. In this fight, like so many before it, it has been a fight. The American people are going to have to fight. And about the importance of fighting, I will always fight. Fighting. But we always must fight. Joe Biden has a deep, deep-seated commitment to fight and to fight and about the importance of fighting. But we always must fight to fight to fight and to fight as our willingness to fight continued the fight. As Joe Biden says, to fight. It's about fighting for what we're fighting for. We will tell them about what we did to fight. It's really about um, a fight. But truly, I do believe that we're in a fight. I believe that we are in a fight. I believe we are in a fight. I believe we are in a fight. So there's a fight in front of us, a fight for all of these things. And so we're prepared to fight for that. We know how to fight. Our ongoing fight, a fight. We know how to fight. We like a good fight. We were born out of a fight. 
This is what is our fight right now. There's the fight, there's the fight, there's the fight, and then there's the fight to defend. Back in the fight. Our mission is to fight. That is the guiding purpose of House Democrats fighting. He has never forgotten who he is fighting for. March and fought, and we just have to fight. But this is a fight for our country. Fighting the health crisis of COVID. I led the fight and continue to fight. Never, never, never give up this fight. I am a citizen fighting for it. It means not only fighting a leader who fought for progressive change, as a lawyer who fought for people his whole life, as well as other fights he's And I'm proud that, uh, to have Tim in this fight with me. And above all, it's time for America to get back up and once again, fight. We will fight when we must fight. What kind of America are we fighting for? We've been fighting, so we need to fight, but we also need to fight, fight for an America. I am going to wake up every day and fight hard. I have been fighting. We're gonna fight. We are gonna fight. We're gonna fight. We're gonna fight. And I will fight. We're in the fight of our lives right now. We fight like hell to fight. To fight. Fight against the Trump administration. Democrats are standing up to fight. We're in this fight in a serious way. It's your fight. We're eager to take on this fight. Get in this fight and we'll fight it out. I have taken on the fight. As representatives for the people, as legislators here in the halls of Congress, our job is to fight. Who has led us in this fight. Is to fight for this. This fight. And every day I'm in the United States Senate, I will fight. And one of the things we do is fight, should fight. And um, Because my constituents send me here each and every day to fight. We have been fighting this fight and we need to be side by side so we can succeed. And so I hope that you will all join us in our fight. And if we fight, and as the next governor of Georgia, I will never stop fighting. We can show the old guard something new and we can fight. My fight, those fights to fight, to fight an administration requiring us to fight and fight we will their fight in their fight in their fight the fight is a fight and so when we fight the fight that we are in when we are fighting this fight we fight this fight the strength of who we are is we will fight and we will fight we will fight the fight we will fight we are in a fight the fight 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 it is a fight is a fight and it is a fight born out of patriotism. This is a fight fighting. I say fight on, fight on, fight on, fight on. I'm here to say one more time in publicly, this is not a fight I wanted to take on, but this is the fight in front of us now. Every single one of you and every one of you, that's okay. You didn't do anything wrong. It's a word people use, but please stop the hypocrisy. We are getting a ton of new video footage from January 6th, and the more we get in, the stranger things seem. Now, I want to caution you quickly, be careful with the video footage that you're seeing, because some people are trying to present some things as nefarious, and they're not. The footage that I'm going to show you on this channel, I am vetting as much as I can to make sure that you're getting truthful, factual information. I'm going to show you two new clips today. The first one is going to be Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer receiving a message from Mike Pence, and there's going to be a major discrepancy in the footage that you see. The second the second one is going to be the Capitol Police holding the crowd back outside of the Capitol and then a strange timing in which the crowd is allowed forward, but it looks like something happened with the police that wasn't previously shown to the public that allowed this to happen. Let's get into the first clip. Uh, to in roughly an hour. 
So the importance of this video clip is there's definitely staging going on during January 6th. And this is one of the issues many people have with what we're seeing is that individuals are being followed around by camera crews, almost like they're filming something pre-planned. In this situation, we see Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi receiving a message from Mike Pence about the, the allowance of them getting back into chambers in about an hour. And then we see this refilmed again in front of the camera crew, but this time with Chuck Grassley there. And a lot of people might say, well, what's the deal with that? Why does that even matter? They're staging it. They didn't need to do this. They could easily have just went to Chuck Grassley and said, hey, listen, Mike Pence says that we're probably going to get back into action in about an hour. They didn't have to bring him in front of the cameras, the CNN cameras that are right there, the media cameras, and say, hey, come over here. We're going to play this for you again. We want you to listen in. They're going to film us. Nancy Pelosi's acting all concerned like it's the first time she heard it. They're staging this so that it can be recorded and shown over and over again for emotional effect. This is not the only type of video we've seen like this, there's many videos that seem staged. When Nancy Pelosi or other Congress people are walking through the chambers or the hallways, it just looks like everything was set up to flow in a certain way. And a lot of people have issue with this. On to the second video. Check this out. Notice right here at about 1426 to 1427, all of a sudden, the crowd is starting to let in. And the crowd is actually kind of peaceful out there. I mean, there's a little bit of ruckus going on, but for the most part, they're pretty peaceful. All of a sudden, the crowd is allowed in in certain areas. It's kind of strange. So something happened there. Now notice there is a large crowd out there, no doubt about it. But for the most part, the police are pretty easily holding them back. I mean, there really is no issue here. Again, there is some ruckus activity, but they're going to be shooting gas bombs into this crowd right now, which seems like a, a, a pretty stupid idea in this situation. But check out what happens. This dude just misfired into the police. Misfired. Straight into the police. And now guess what's going to happen? The police are now going to retreat back. So everyone's been told that the crowd actually pushed their way through the police, but in reality, the police retreated because they shot a gas bomb at themselves. Now, I'm not saying that this was on purpose, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to suggest anything, but maybe it was, maybe it wasn't, but this is the actual real narrative right here. Not that the crowd pushed through, but that this occurred. And you can see all the police retreating up away from the crowd back up towards the, the Capitol into the stairs here. So ultimately what I'm trying to say is, is that you have not been given all the information. There has been a narrative that has been fed to you. There has been repeated video footage on the media over and over again that everyone has seen, but they haven't seen the additional footage. There's also been footage that has been deleted by the January 6th committee, and there's also been footage that they have conveniently lost. Now we are getting ton of this footage in right now, which is painting a different picture, albeit I'm going to be honest with you. 
there is some individuals in this crowd who are doing the wrong thing. But even in that case, I'm not entirely sure who they are because I, I can't say for sure that these are Trump supporters who are throwing things and who are breaking things because it could very well be members from Antifa or individuals who have been planted in the crowd. And the reason I say that is because the majority of the crowd, I mean, probably 99% or above of this crowd is generally acting fine. Oh, yes, they are congregating onto the Capitol and they are probably fairly upset of the election results, but generally they're doing the right thing. We're only seeing a very small group of people doing the terrible things that have been shown on video. Unlike some of the recent things we've been seeing from the Palestinian protests for Hamas, where you see the entire group acting out of control. Everybody. It's not a small percentage. It's the entire group of whatever video footage you're looking at. But that's not the case here. So when we see these two new videos with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer getting that message from Mike Pence, it just reeks of being staged. Come over here, Chuck Grassley. I'm going to play this for you again. We're going to do it in front of the CNN cameras, and I'm going to act like I'm kind of mortified at this news and what's going on here so that we can show this to the people. And then the second video footage, obviously, how crazy this is, that the police, first off, were shooting these gas bombs into the crowd when... It probably was unnecessary to do so. You're probably going to actually get a, a worse reaction by doing it, but then shot it into themselves and the police retreated on their own. And then the crowd followed in towards the police. They literally were just like, oh, the police are backing up to this area. And they moved in and followed where they were. I mean, this is just two new pieces of video. There's a lot more out there. So as it comes in, I'll continue to share it with you. Again, I'm going to vet the video because there was way more video than this that I caught. And some of it is not what you would think it would be. It's being presented one way. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to put video out there that is not accurate and probably suggesting something that it is. I want to only give the accurate stuff. So these are two new ones that I found. Uh, leave your comment below, whatever you think about this. I'd love to hear it. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Well, we go under cover as antiques in a crowd. So can you put that back in? Thank you so yep, much. Yep. It feels better. You guys get sprayed. Here, here. Take this long bottle.